Excellent. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Jack Harper. I'm a senior solution architect with Couchbase based in San Francisco. I am here on behalf of my colleague, Dean, who could not be here to uh, present to you guys today about um, two great features that will allow you guys to operate your Couchbase clusters 100% in memory. Um, operational excellence. You know, uh, if you're sitting in this room, that's something that you care about. And uh, a lot of that comes down to uh, optimizing your, your uh, applications and your uh, Couchbase clusters for performance and throughput. So uh, we've been sensitive to that. We've included a lot of features on our roadmap uh, to, to help you guys manage that and to um, optimize performance. And we're going to talk about those today, ephemeral buckets and memory optimized indexes. Um, just a quick uh, agenda. First, we'll, we'll discuss in-memory databases, a brief history of buckets, um, talk about uh, the ephemeral buckets feature, what it does, and what some of the limitations are, as well as uh, memory optimized indexes. And then we'll do a quick demo so you guys can see those features in action. So, in memory architectures. An in memory database is not just a nice to have option anymore, it has become critical to support next generation transactions, analytics, and operational insights. So as uh, you know, conduct, business is being conducted at light speed nowadays, the, the requirements for applications and databases have steadily increased. From an application perspective, we need to be in, able to ingest large quantities of data very quickly. Uh, we need to be able to index them and query them with very little latency. Uh, we need the ability to support complex and ad hoc queries. Uh, we need those queries to be uh, uh, highly concurrent and we need the ability to connect our systems together. Um, from an operations perspective, we also continue to need to be able to scale very quickly, depending on uh, uh, the ebb and flow of a business, uh, high availability features, disaster recovery, uh, ease of operations, and uh, supporting a multi-model approach. So Couchbase excels in so many of these areas, and we, you know, with, with the introduction of the uh, some of these new features, we get even better. So just a brief history of buckets. Uh, I assume everybody in this room is fairly familiar with Couchbase. Um, long, long time ago, uh, we had memcache D buckets. They provide a directly addressed distributed in-memory key value cache designed to be used alongside other database platforms like relational databases uh, and by caching frequently used data, they reduce the number of queries a database server must perform for web servers delivering a web application. So that's where it all began. Years later in, in 2010, uh, we rebranded memcached as membase. That was largely a branding move. And then in 2012, we introduced Couchbase buckets. So Couchbase buckets gave us the best of what the memcached buckets had to offer along with additional high availability uh, uh, and data persistence and replication features. Uh, they are Couchbase buckets, just to be clear, still 100% protocol compatible with and built in the spirit of the memcached open source distributed key value cache. So that's a very, very brief history of buckets for you. So just to kind of uh, compare memcached to Couchbase, uh, Couchbase buckets are far, far superior. Um, they provide persistence. They provide replication, the ability to rebalance, XDCR, uh, nickel queries, indexing. None of those features are supported by memcached buckets. The advantage of a memcached bucket, however, is it, there is no persistence to disk. So for certain use cases, it was a convenient uh, and a, a better way to go um, to sort of right size your, your hardware costs and, and the, the footprints of your clusters. So we heard you, a lot of our customers said, well, we want all of those ben benefits of the memcache D buckets without the need to persist, uh, but we also want, we want all of the other features, for example, replication, rebalance, XDCR, nickel indexing. We want, basically want everything but persistence to disk. So, 
uh, just to kind of demonstrate over time from version 3x to the, the latest version of Couchbase, uh, which will be released this fall, we've improved performance nearly three times in terms of bucket performance. Throughput has increased nearly three times. Uh, however, this comes at a significant cost. The, the more performant the buckets are, uh, the more potential there, are, there will be for disk I.O. contention and bottlenecks. So as we steadily improve the throughput of, of couch-based bucket, uh, couch buckets, uh, ephemeral buckets could be an answer to that, that, uh, to that challenge. So many say, but I don't need persistence, right? I want all those features, just don't need persistence. These are just a few use cases that uh, could potentially take advantage of this feature. Caching use cases, session, uh, session management use cases, shopping carts, uh, PCI compliance, security sensitive type use cases, as well as analytics. So introducing ephemeral buckets. So we, back to our uh, handy chart, we see that we actually now offer a bucket type or will offer a bucket type in uh, Couchbase 5 that will give you all of the features of a Couchbase bucket but without dis persistence to disk. And that is what the ephemeral buckets feature is. So what are the benefits? Uh, no high performance disk subsystem required so you can really uh, try to minimize the, the footprint and the cost of your hardware and your cluster. Uh, even more consistent high performance because we've eliminated potential disk I.O. bottlenecks. You can, and we'll see this in our demo, you can actually ingest and replicate data much faster. Uh, lower CPU consumption, which means, you know, if you guys are, uh, you know, running in Amazon, you might be able to get away with a, uh, uh, a less uh, uh, intense instance type uh, or less robust instance type and faster maintenance operations, particularly uh, impressive there is the uh, rebalancing operations uh, in our lab are completing four times as fast because we've eliminated a lot of that uh, disk I.O. However, there are some limitations to using ephemeral buckets. Uh, the data set must fit in memory. Um, however, we, the, uh, what the behavior when in the out of memory scenarios is configurable. Uh, no automatic recovery from total power loss. Obviously, if it's in memory, all your cluster goes down data is gone, but these are, you know, this, this data is by definition uh, typically uh, has a finite lifespan. So, you know, for a caching use case, that might not be a huge issue, but we still support um, our enterprise backups and XDCR. So you can still build out your cluster topologies to hedge against that scenario. Uh, you can only use the memory optimized index feature um, and full text search is also supported. No views, no GS, uh, no G, sorry, no views, just GSI, which, well, actually, when I say GSI, MOI. Um, so that's, that's really ephemeral buckets in a nutshell. Uh, it's everything that a couch-based bucket has to offer, many, many benefits, um, and for some particular use cases, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be great, and, you know, feel free to reach out to us, uh, uh, on the SC team or the professional services team, and we're happy to help you guys uh, sort of intake the information, get started with the beta program so that you can explore the functionality yourselves and answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, speaking of questions, are there any questions? Yes. Uh, yes, in fact, there's... Uh, the question is, are you able to reclaim the memory when a document is deleted? And the answer is yes. And we actually will see in the demo there's an additional eviction type of uh, NRU uh, not recently used where we sort of track which documents have been recently used and which have not, and we'll evict the uh, documents that have not been recently used. Yes. It, yeah, the bucket still supports flush. Yeah. Uh, how to migrate the data from couch-based bucket to any bucket? The question is how to migrate data from a couch-based bucket to this new ephemeral bucket type. And I actually don't believe that there is a, uh, there's not going to be a migration tool per se. However, you can use the SDK and scripts and things like that to pull data from one and to insert it into another. 
or XDCR is the other, probably more preferable option. Replicate from an ephemeral, the question is, can you replicate from an ephemeral bucket to a couch space bucket? The answer is no. That you, it, the buckets need to be the same type across various codes. Wait, so it's, it's only one direction? But not the other way around. Yes. The question is, can you have a couch-based bucket and an ephemeral bucket in the same cluster? The answer is yes. No warm-up time. <laughs> it is kind of funny. I mean, it, you know, if you restart your cluster, you start from scratch. It's the, the same limitations apply regardless of what uh, type of bucket you choose. Um, how, and and those, those requirements and those guidelines may change over time. So um, that's the, currently that's the, the recommendation is to have fewer than 10 buckets per cluster. That's correct. The question is the combined number of buckets, ephemeral and couch based, should not exceed 10. And yes, that is the best practice. Yes? So, couch based to ephemeral. So ephemeral is not, the ephemeral buckets and memcached buckets are not the same. Ephemeral buckets are couch-based buckets that support replication and all the other couch-based bucket features, but with the only exception of there is no persistence to disk. That's the only difference between a couch-based bucket, well, the only major difference between those two bucket types. Hey, Asif, do you want to come up here so they can, sure. those on the <laughs> webinar can hear you? We're, we're talking about having a 100% uh, in-memory requirement, right? So you, that means that everything that you have in the ephemeral bucket needs to reside in memory. That means one of two things need to happen is either you reject the incoming mutation, right? And that's an option when you configure the bucket. Alternatively, you go through an LRU mechanism wherein you send the mutation, that means what is going to happen is something's got to give, it'll evict out one of the other older objects, and that means that older object will no longer be in memory, right? And that's perfectly accessible. That's a perfectly acceptable solution for essentially the use cases that we're talking about, right? Either session management, geolocation, or whatever else, right? Cool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, DDLs will be supported. Yes. Right. So again, what you're talking about in terms of TTL, when you talk about Kajibis buckets, the specific that uh, stuff that you're talking about is the tombstoning, et cetera. As far as ephemeral buckets are concerned, no persistence, no compaction. That means that that scroll bar you see on top will not simply appear, right? So there's no compaction to deal with. So yeah. So when you're talking about backup, yes, you're talking about uh, creating an offline 
backup of the data, right? So if you want to store point in time information, you can use our regular backup tools to backup the data to a persistent store, right? So which is backup to disk or file system. Yeah, to, so if you want to recover point in time. Could you repeat that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, yeah, so the question is that can nickel be used across ephemeral buckets and regular buckets? So nickel today supports cross-bucket joins. Nothing changes from uh, ephemeral bucket scenario. As long as the indexes that you're talking about are still memory-optimized indexes, you should be able to run all the same uh, queries that you're able to do with existing buckets with MOI today. And that, that's the main difference, right? No persistence on the ephemeral side means no persistence on the indexes side. You have to have ephemeral buckets with MOI for it to be usable. Mm -hmm. uh, could you repeat the question, sorry? So you could do joins, like I said, between ephemeral buckets and non-ephemeral uh, buckets, right? But obviously, when you're talking about joins, the first thing everybody needs to be the thing remember is that those joins are obviously within cluster. You can't do it cross-cluster joins, right? The bucket needs to be on the same cluster. So yes, that's doable. Okay. Anybody else? So you should see that in the demo, and then we can yes. talk about it. So just Essentially. table that, so we can dig into that a bit more detail. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So if you're purely key value, then yeah, you yeah. absolutely. Again, when you talk about TTL, it has to do with document life, right? Yeah. So so that has to do with the eviction policy. You're talking about two separate things. Okay, right? right? TTL and eviction policy are two separate things. When you talk about eviction policy, it comes down to yes, if you're getting into memory pressures, you've already maxed out your memory. And then if a new document comes in, then the others will get affected. That's option number one. Option yeah. number two is that it'll get a rejection in terms of mutation. I'm already full in terms of memory. There needs to be a manual process for you to clean up based on the error that you get. So eviction is possible on the percent of the memory you type on the bucket? Uh, eviction is possible based on percentage memory. It depends on the threshold. You set. There's really only, we'll see also see the two eviction yeah. options. And when you hit the high water mark is when you would trigger, there, you either evict or you don't, really. Yeah. It's all or nothing. Excellent conversation. We've been talking about it for a year. We're pushing product management to put that on the roadmap. Yeah, excellent. Sign you up on creating an MB in Jira for us, please. <laughs> I've got his card, so. <laughs> okay. Cool. And we can we can take more questions after we do the demo. Just in the interest of time, make sure we get through all of this. Uh, so. Uh, one of the other features that we discussed if you are planning to use uh, nickel with uh, ephemeral buckets is you will be required to use memory optimized indexes. Um, you really should be using them anyway. This is not a new feature. This has been around since 4.5. Um, and just to kind of demonstrate, when uh, from an indexing perspective, processing mutations that come in, uh, memory uh, MOIs or memory optimized indexes can be greater than 50 times faster than standard GSI. So, uh, you know, for, for use cases where, you know, you need very low latencies and high throughput, 
uh, MOI is definitely the way to go. Uh, same thing with, uh, with query throughput. More uh, uh, concurrency in your queries greater than 20 times higher query throughput under certain circumstances. So um, just the, the takeaway here is if you're using, uh, if you're using nickel, you uh, really should be using MOI. Um, and really quick, any questions on any very brief questions on MOI? And uh, if so, if not, I'll just jump right into the demo. Say, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Versus GSI. Um, I, there's not mater materially very similar, just different uh, how the data is stored, uh, all either in memory or spilling over to disk. So no, it's for all intents and purposes, you have pretty much the same feature set. All right, let's go to the demo. Okay, so for our little demo here, we have two instances of Couchbase 5 that are both running in AWS, same instance type. The cluster on the left has our standard Couchbase bucket. We've flushed the bucket, it has no items in it. And then our, excuse me, our cluster on the right has our ephemeral bucket. So just uh, really quickly, uh, the process of creating a, an ephemeral bucket versus a couch-based bucket's pretty much the same with a few additional options. Uh, you'll notice that there are now three bucket types, including the ephemeral bucket type. If you select ephemeral, then you'll have the ability to select the ejection method. And I think this was. Uh, sort of relevant to your question, what happens when you, you start to run out of memory? Well, two options here. One is no ejection, which means uh, you need to handle the out of memory uh, scenario uh, and your application should be responsible for either setting a TTL or managing the documents, expirations, and deletions. Uh, there's another option uh, called the NRU ejection, which is the not recently used ejection. Um, our handy tooltip does uh, add a little disclaimer for you that it is more efficient because you're not having to sort of manage the, uh, uh, the footprint or the, the, the lifespan of your documents. However, you know, you, it could lead to unexpected results. So just use this option carefully if you're certain that that's going to work for you in your scenarios. So those are your two ejection methods. It's all or nothing, basically, is, is how that works. So um, all of the other options are the same. Uh, flush is supported. Uh, replicas are supported. So you can uh, create your buckets just like you normally would. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to kick off a uh, synthetic workload using the pillow fight tool. And what that's going to do is load a, data, uh, a set of data into the cluster. And then it's going to begin reading as it's writing and then ultimately reading the cluster. And we're going to see. Uh, that we uh, have a, a significantly better performance with ephemeral buckets because we've eliminated disk I.O. All right, so I'm just going to kick off my demo here. So uh, the client on the top is executing the synthetic workload against the couch base bucket. The client on the bottom is executing against the ephemeral bucket. And we can already see that the operations per second uh, for, for what this is really a synthetic ingestion of data are much higher for the ephemeral bucket because we've eliminated disk IO. We'll also see that the number of items created, and it's just a little bit out of sync with how these are refreshing, but you can see that in the ephemeral bucket, we are well ahead in terms of the number of items. And these, again, these it's the same size, uh, uh, same uh, resources available to the client, but we can see that we are ingesting data much, much faster in the ephemeral bucket versus the couch base bucket. And so let's drill in really quickly and look at some of the spe sp specific statistics. Say that five times fast. 
All right. So in particular, the DCP queues are where we really see a distinction between these two different uh, uh, types of buckets. We're just going to kind of compare. So uh, we're able to, the, the really the key stat here that we're looking at is the drain rate bytes per second. Uh, and we can see that it's almost, uh, the throughput for an ephemeral bucket is almost twice as fast because we're not having to service a disk queue. Uh, so because we've eliminated the need to, to persist to disk, we're able to ingest data faster and replicate that data to the other nodes in the cluster faster. So it's, it's a, a great feature. It can uh, you know, really optimize the performance of your cluster. Can you guys see that? Sure. So on the left, which is our couch-based bucket, we've got a drain rate in terms of bytes per second of 1.6. And on the right, we've got a drain rate bytes per second. And I'm sorry, when I say bytes per it's 1.6 megs. And on the right, it's 2.35 megs. So we're really processing um, much, much more data uh, uh, when we're doing the ingestion on the ephemeral bucket. And we also see that the indexing uh, for our... Uh, uh, nickel queries is also completing, we're able to process a significantly higher number of items per second, as well as bytes per second, which means your data is indexed faster when using ephemeral buckets. And I will show you guys that here. Last thing I want to show, and then I'll take questions. So from a query perspective, if we execute account statement here, we can see that we are well ahead. The ephemeral bucket is well ahead in terms of the number of items that have been indexed than the, uh, the, the standard couch-based bucket. So we've really shown that just eliminating disk I.O. but allowing us to continue to use all of the other features and capabilities of couch-based buckets that we're seeing just significantly higher throughput. Now keep in mind, we're also not persisting to disk, so this isn't going to be uh, uh, you know, the, the right type of bucket for every use case, right? But for some use, some very specific use cases, and we're more than happy to have conversations with you guys and evaluate whether or not this feature is right for you. So just feel free to reach out to us. So that's, that's the demo. Any, uh, any questions? The CPU should be slightly lower on the ephemeral bucket side. So let's look at that. Let's see here. And actually, yep, and uh, let's see. It's about the same. And what, and, and what actually happens is if we were holding the operations per second of the ingestion process the same, we would see that delta in CPU utilization between the two different clusters. But since we have additional capacity, that's why we're able to ingest more data. So that's why we're seeing, we're more efficiently using our resources to process the data during the ingestion process. Yes, so you have all the same failover features that you do with a couch-based bucket. Um, because the replicas would still be promoted to active, it would still accept mutations, and then at the point where a failed node comes back to the cluster, you can do the same. Delta, yeah, delta, but you would have to do a full recovery, full recovery. Awesome, well, if you guys have any questions, uh, again, let me pull up my contact information, and well, this isn't the right presentation. Oops. Uh, feel free to email me. Uh, I'm happy to, let me make it readable. <laughs> there go. All right. Um, and uh, just as a reminder, uh, we hopefully you've installed the Couchbase Connect mobile app. Please uh, be sure to take the in-app survey. Um, 
And if you'd like to scan a QR code and share your opinion on Couchbase, you can do that too. I suppose you would do that now, right? Before I switch to the next slide. And then of course, please follow us on social media. So thank you guys very much.